Uh, what I now wanted to do was to run you through the terminologies, the roles and the relationships. And uh, to begin with, what I wanted to give as a, as a definition, because we are all technical, um, what is a web API, what is a mashup, what is a web app, what is a mobile app, right? Um, a web API is, is defined as a set of HTTP request messages along with the definition of the structure of the response messages, right? Now, what's typical about a web API is it's either expressed in JSON or XML, and that's what makes it, um, you know, a web API. It's, the protocol is HTTP. The payload is either JSON or XML. That's, those are the key ingredients of, of an API, of a of web API. A mashup, as I told you before, is a web application. Uh, it's a web page or an application that uses web APIs to consume or uh, to combine data. It could be presentation and create, uh, uh, provide more functionality, right? Uh, web apps, everybody knows what web apps are. It's, um, it's an application that you access over the internet. Um, and it's typically supported by programming languages like the JavaScript and, and HTML, and these days HTML5 and things like that, right? Uh, mobile applications are exactly web applications, uh, just like web applications. It's just that the distribution network for mobile applications is either from the popular stores that we have. It could be an app, the Apple App Store uh, if you have an iPhone. Uh, the Google Play Store, if you have uh, an Android or, or a Windows Phone Store, so so these are the these are the terminologies that that come into play when you're when you're talking about APIs and web APIs, and that brings us to you know trying to understand what kind of roles. Let's say you have the organization has looked at uh, API and you know, has made that a decision to go after or rather to have an um, you know a developer program for your organization. There are different kinds of roles that are there in this particular uh, ecosystem, right? The first one is the business user. Now, this person is is really looking at this as um, an opportunity to reach new markets, um, to understand. He basically understands what value uh, can be brought to the business by exposing assets, by exposing back back end assets, right? Uh, he's the one who's basically experimenting with you know different programs, uh, campaigns. Um, a good way to do this uh, is you know to have a hackathon, right? I've been to a few conferences where they kind of have you know, hey, look, this is our API, and this is the information that we can get. Why don't you come come over, you know, uh, over lunch, and then why don't you you know develop some APIs or rather develop some applications using our APIs. So that's like a developer hackathon that he would be interested in to, to popularize that particular API, right? Um, again, he also has the onus of, of running this as a business initiative within the organization. So this is one kind of person, the business user, right? The next person that I want to talk to you about is the IT person, is the IT manager, probably the enterprise architect who has this role of, you know, how am I going to expose the API, you know? This is not going to be. This is not going to be old stuff. This is probably going to be new to this person, right? Uh, he, he's probably going to be worried about security. How are you going to scale? We're, lo we're talking about trillions of devices um, that uh, that that potentially can uh, are there outside in the world today, and and will the back end cope with with that much? Uh, so so scalability of the infrastructure, reliability of the infrastructure. Security of their infrastructure is, is going to be of prime importance for this particular person, right? Um, as 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 it has always been for years together that you know, this person is always uh, you know short on time. He has to deliver more in less less number of less time, less number of resources, and stuff like that. That brings us to to the last person in this in this space, which is um, the app developer. Now, this is a person on the street. It could be a person on the street. It could be an app developer in your organization, an internal application developer, right? Uh, and probably an enthusiast in, in creating new apps, you know, creating, um, you know, be it public apps or private apps. Um, he understands web programming languages. That's what he, he knows. He probably knows about HTML5, uh, JavaScript, and, and all of that, you know. And, and usually spends his, you know, free time to do uh, to create to create cool new apps. So this is the third person in this particular space 
it's important to know these roles because these are the roles that come into play when you're when you're actually looking at you know putting up or you know making this you know monster rise in your in your organization. Um, I know this this probably is old information, uh, but I just wanted to touch upon uh, the basics of REST. As you know, REST is um, uh, is an architectural style uh, as against a, a protocol. Uh, it's a popular choice for building web applications. It has been very popular, uh, and there have been there have been many advances in terms of uh, you know um, what REST is, and you know there's pragmatic REST, there's pure REST. There's many ways in which you can you can use REST in terms of uh, web application. Now, what it is basically, um, you know, the usage of a verb over a noun, right? So when you look at the verb, it's basically the you know the HTTP methods that you have: the get, get, put, uh, post, and delete. The noun is actually the resource, right? Uh, and I'm going to explain to explain this to you with an example, right? Um, now let's take an example of an application that that gives you to manage your photographs, right? So let's say there's going to be there's going to be a, an action or there's going to be a use case where you say, you know, I want to list all the photographs. And at the moment the person logs into the application, he should see all the photographs that he that he's uploaded in that application, right? So so what you're going to do is you're going to go you're going to get, which is the action, a list of photographs. Right now, in that you probably also want to do show me one photograph. I've seen all the pictures in thumbnails. I want to see one picture. So you're probably going to get a specific resource which probably has an ID or maybe a file name or something like that. So there's another um, use case of, um, of of rest. You probably want to delete a photograph. You probably want to add a photograph. And when you want to delete your your verb changes to delete, when you want to add a photograph, you probably need to provide a photograph that you need to browse over in from your file file management application, and then provide it. So you, it needs to be a post uh, action for that particular use case. So this is you know this is about understanding REST. You know, big overview. Of course, you know there's uh, pages and pages that are available on the internet that explain REST. But I just wanted to give you an overview. Um, even without that, um, XML, as you know, it has been a very, very popular um, information exchange um, format. Right? Um, one good, you know, one interesting thing is that today the the number of APIs. You know, we we all know that JSON is is picking up in in popularity, but the the number of APIs that are there today are the ones that that expose uh, information in XML. Right? Um, I have given a very simple example from from Twilio um, that gives that gives the uh, idea of you know what an SMS message is. Twilio is a is a telephony um, API that one can use. Um, so so it's about it's about uh, you know, developers basically rely on examples as I just showed you you know on on the Expedia uh, affiliate network developer program. They're really not looking at XML schemas. They're looking at examples that they can quickly use and um, get get up and running with it. JSON again uh, is is a, is a popular interchange format. Uh, it is again based on the JavaScript programming language. Uh, it's easy for um, humans to read and write. I I being from old school, I have I still prefer XML. But for machines, it's easier to pass. It's it's a, it's a lot more lightweight than than XML is there's less number of tags when when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at JSON. All right, so it's the same example that you saw uh, converted in JSON that that you see in the bottom half of the screen. Uh, 